Today's going to be a pretty straightforward mod stream. No lens hunting, no no real updates on the Mamiya project. Um, 
Yeah, it's just a, a couple of contacts primes that, that we need to do. I mentioned them last week and I just got completely sidetracked. So these are pretty straightforward, full city mod. Yeah, let's hop in. Los Angeles. Alright. First one up is at 28. Not the Hollywood. This is a 28. From Burbank. Thank you, George. <laughs> Designed these mounts, so these are genuine my tax mounts. Come on. All right. done contacts before they know Jesus crap. the mount screws are, can be the trickiest part this one's actually missing one already um, this one doesn't look too chewed up so hopefully these all go pretty smoothly um, condition wise this is in Pretty good shape. A little bit of discoloration on the uh, engraving paint on the focus and the witness, but not on the iris, which is odd. Focus feels okay. It's kind of light, but that's not bad. Glass itself looks really good. Where's my good flashlight? Gone. Someone stole my flashlight. Where the heck did I put that? Oh, I'll use this one. It's got some some minor haze, but this is in really good shape overall. Where is my flashlight? Maybe someone took it for photos. A little bit of lost motion at the close focus. This is all, all in all though, this is really nice. that project that you were shooting, if you're allowed to say. <laughs> oh, 
commercial for an upcoming boxing match. Oh, that's kind of cool. Anderson Silva. And it looks like at some point somebody re glued this um, rubber grip virus. Or maybe, maybe they used a, um, like a double sided tape that's breaking down. Those who follow MMA boxing. I don't, so it's easy to work with them. Since it's your idea, <laughs> I guess that that can help sometimes. You're not, uh, you don't have opinions or preconceived notions. You just do your job. This is all pretty clean. A little bit of um, red locker residue, but other than that, <laughs> very nice. Phelps did a shoot with Dua Lipa a while back. And same thing, she was just like one of the crew. <laughs> oh, it's way too old even to remember. Aw. Oh. You're not that old, George. Come on. So this has a little bit of sand. A little bit of debris in it. It's kind of hard to get on camera. Right in, in these corners, these edges, pretty packed. That's a little concerning. Because if it's in there, then it's probably in the lens as well. Nick Cave shoot? Nick Cave? You mean Nick Cage? Is that a typo? I don't know who Nick Cave is. Then again, I don't know who would be starstruck by Nick Cage. Sir. 
Sir Nick Cave, the Bad Seed. Uh, sorry. Sorry, George, you lost me. Overall, this is in good shape. This piece is where most of the dirt collected. I'll show you this Kim wipe after I get all this crud out. That'll show up a little better. Yeah, see that? That's what I'm talking about. You know some films that use like a R. I don't particularly know. Sure, some of the people on the stream right now would know better than I would. Um, that's something I've always struggled with, or you know, since we started the company, we service lenses. You know, the mod stuff is fun. Um, we've been doing it forever, but the our main business is still service lens repair for like high-end motion picture lenses, and we've been doing that for almost 20 years now, and we almost never know where the lenses go once we've fixed them. It's, it's, uh, those customers, whether it's the rental house or the production company, they're not very chatty about the projects they go on, so I don't usually know what the lenses are doing. Um, which is very different from when I worked at a rental house. I worked at Keslo Camera, and it was always very clear. They were always, you know, the, the rental manager would always, oh, this is a big deal. This is for this production, or this is for this DP. Um, and that was always made very clear because they were trying to impress that client, or they were trying to, you know, give the whole white glove solution. Um, but being as far detached from the productions as we are now, we rarely hear about what they're doing. kind of nasty, whatever adhesive they used here. She is from Poland. Is that another Poland? We have two people from Poland right now? Just did a drug commercial with my leg R's. Not too exciting. <laughs> 
Well, it depends on the drug. Is it for uh, Moderna? That's kind of exciting. This looks much better. I'm just being picky. Need for speed. Yeah, that, that probably did use Leica R's because they had a lot of crash cameras. Ozark, really? Fantastic example of like ours. Everybody loves that cinematography. Johnny, welcome to the stream. Plenty clean now. What's with all the Mamiya Sekor C stuff? I've been out of the loop. Um, last, last mod stream and part of the mod stream before that, um, I was using my experience with the, with hunting for Mamiya lenses uh, as sort of a, a guide to show people what to look for, what to, you know, what to avoid uh, when looking for lenses on eBay. And I think it worked pretty well. I think I was able to show people a lot of the, the pitfalls, a lot of the, the tricks, um, a lot of the heartbreak. <laughs> 
that, that 150 is still plaguing me. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to build up my... I've had, I've had three Mimias for like two years. And I've always meant to complete the set. So I started snatching up the rest of them, um, which I kind of hope doesn't drive up the price because I don't want to pay more. <laughs> They're already kind of increasing in value, but I'm not done buying them, so I hope they don't skyrocket too quickly. I finally had a chance to play, for anybody that was on that on stream and they were watching, um, I got a chance to play with the the soft focus. Um, shoot, I'm forgetting the focal length. I think it's a 145 soft focus, um, and it was really cool. Very very 90s, very uh, you know big hair, soft detail. Very cool lens. Very different lens. My friend Dane posted about his 45mm out his current favorite, so I'm intrigued. The 45 is nice. Um, um, I did not remove the haze yet. Adelson, no. Not yet. So what's the deal with them? They're 645 coverage, right? Yeah, so they're medium format, but they... Unlike most other medium format lenses, they don't have a shutter built in. So they're just a straightforward simple optical mechanical design uh, but the optics are really nice in them so yes they cover 645 but they can easily be adapted so like right now i have a um, 645 to l mount speed booster so it's reducing the image down to full frame on my sigma fp and um, pretty awesome. I, I really am enjoying the image quality. Except for that 80 that has all the haze. I mean, it's getting nice images. I know a lot of people are saying don't touch it, <laughs> but it's just not what it's supposed to be doing. I can achieve that same look with, um, you know, like a pro mist or a glimmer glass. I don't need it to be baked into the lens. Basically, if you enjoy Leica R's or Zeiss Contacts even, or Canon FD's, then the Mimia Secor C is right up your alley. mod stream when I was still buying some lenses um, I ended up buying a, a different 150 FO and the seller emailed me like the next day and said hey uh, this has a lot more haze than the ads or than the listing said which I thought was a little odd because the listing I mean why did it change from what he posted the listing to when I ordered it? So uh, I think he might have figured out who I was and knew that I was going to critique the crap out of it. Uh, and so he emailed saying, okay, I'll cancel this order, no fees or anything. Just let me know. So I said, fine, cancel it. If the, if the haze is worse than what was shown in the listing, then yeah, cancel it. So, it was nice of him to, to offer that without any hassle, but still, it's disappointing because I'm, I'm still hunting for that 150 Apo. Off topic, I want 
does the orange and 25 to 250 vignette on Super 35? Which 25 to 250? The new one? Or the vintage HR? Or the HP? Or the 3.9? My wife was just telling me that I should buy it to a completely different camera system than the 5. There you go. What? What? <laughs> Why would she tell you that? That seems backwards. Am I reading that right? It's telling me I should buy into a completely different camera system than the 5. Sarka. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, is if on high? What's going on? <laughs> Here's another common issue we see with Zeiss contact lenses. The aperture shape is slightly irregular. Oh, I turned off autofocus on here. There we go, that might work. There we go. So you see that Right around, what is this? That's F4. At F4, it's pretty consistent. But at smaller apertures there, that's, that's F11. There's 16. It becomes a little oblong. Um, and that's not uncommon at all with size contacts. Five to two fifty two three four three point five style does not just use it yesterday on a very camera. How much does the investment in a set of cinema lenses pay for? It's an odd question. You mean how much can you make on them? <laughs> Completely depends on many, many variables. Depends on the lenses, depends on the market that you're in, depends on you know, are you are you renting them through share grade or are you putting them in a rental house? Um, are you renting them as part of your package? So many, so many variables. I try to discourage people from buying lenses solely as an investment though. That kind of became uh, trendy about five to ten years ago when people outside of cinematography were buying sets of lenses. Um, you know, we'd get DITs and sound guys and people that just had money to burn asking to buy sets of high-end cine lenses because they heard that it was a good investment and they could rent them out and make money. Um, and that trend kind of took off. People started buying 
lower cost or lower price lenses, um, like Tokinas and Sigmas and stuff like that. And that was not a good investment. That was, that's a good investment if it's your tool, if you are using it, but it's not gonna make you money unless you're in just the right market. Quick question, sent some Leicas to you guys. They said they're good units for Cinemod and didn't give any suggestions. Does that mean they're in good shape, question mark? Um, yeah, usually if, if a lens is not in good shape and we feel like there's work that we could do to improve them, we would definitely let you know and offer to perform additional work. Um, Kind of confusing verbiage. Yeah, that happens. Um, Kane, if you don't mind, I could pull up your your lenses right now and use you as an example here. Yes, please do. All right. Let's see what Kane's lenses look like on paper. it was approved, which I'm, in which case I'm looking in the wrong spot. Okay, here we go. Yep, quoted. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Three... Three like ours, 3550, 90. So yeah, the, there's a very thorough report that we do for the lenses that's strictly internal, because um, it's, it's mostly gibberish to people that don't use the same system as us. Um, but these are all in pretty good shape. Um, Let's see, just some minor blemishes, uh, a tiny bit of haze. The focus was a little heavy on the 35, uh, but nothing that stood out, nothing that required, nothing that would justify taking the lens apart and removing everything. Um, which is always a balance, just you know, to explain that a little more. If we if we saw a tiny bit of contamination and the focus was a little heavy, kind of like this 35, and we said, oh, it needs an overhaul, it makes us look really shysty. It makes us look like the guys that are trying to sell blinker fluid to old ladies with their cars, you know. So it 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 would it could benefit from that, but it certainly doesn't need it. Um, the 50 front element's good. Light scratches on the rear, which is totally normal. Focus is a little dry. Uh, everything else was good. Collimation was short, but that's fine because I think you're getting a mount conversion, so that'll be corrected when we do the mount conversion. Yeah, you are, so no problem there. Uh, same thing, just a couple light scratches on the 90. Focus is a little heavy, but that's normal for that lens. Uh, yeah, these are in overall really good shape. Nothing, nothing crazy. So that means I made good purchases. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, without looking at the lenses, um, which truth be told, they'll probably end up on the mod stream next weekend. <laughs> um, but yeah, this technician that, that wrote all this up is, uh, he's very thorough, so I have no doubt that he caught everything that needed to be caught. Other than that, yeah, everything's normal. Yeah, it can definitely be risky. If you got them on eBay or online, then yeah. Uh, back to Johnny. I'm thinking about getting the 18 Zeiss Milvis, even though I have the classics. I have the 18 3.5. I kind of don't really like it for Cine, but might try the Milvis. Yeah, the the ZF2 Classic 18, or the ZE, same thing. Um, that was the dog of the set. I've never liked that 18 
ever. Uh, the Milvis is a completely different design and they fixed everything that you could complain about. Uh, it's a uh, F2.8 now, the image quality is much better. Zeiss Otis is a good choice for cinematography, breathing acceptable. There is definitely breathing on the Zeiss Otis, there's no question about that, but it's pretty minimal compared to something like a Canon Zoom. Um, I've seen some amazing projects shot on Zeiss Otis. Like cinematography stuff, yeah, I know they're not full-blown cine lenses, but the image quality that those lenses produce is almost unbeatable. second. All right, sorry about that. I don't know why nobody else answered the door. Okay, where was we? Do you know if Sice will make a new Otis lens to complete the set? That has been a question for years. Um, they came out with the 100 millimeter not too long ago, which was kind of a bummer. I don't think anybody actually wanted a hundred millimeter. I think everyone wanted a, a 35 or even like a 40 or something a little more usable. The actual practical difference between a 85 and 100 is pretty petty. Took your advice when you said you don't care much about this show. Good. Good. Good morning, Marson. Welcome back. So the 18 mil was for sale at 8.95. Someone bought it. Oh, fun fact, Johnny. Um, I don't know if it started yet. Actually, let me pull it up real quick. And then I might not be allowed to talk about it. Hold on. Okay, I can. It's active now. Um, but Zeiss is doing a pretty big sale. I mean, it's not going to be as low as 895, but the 18 mil of this is usually. It's usually about $2,300. It's on sale right now for about 2000 So I think. I think that's across the board on all the Milvis lenses that Zeiss is doing a, a sale. So if you were on the fence for a new Milvis, snatch it up now. Hey, 
I deeply can damp dampened. You mean damped? My like R28 million, but the iris closes by itself. Probably at the 50. Do I need to take? No, you cannot take the spring out, or it won't work. And you cannot use a more viscous grease because that means it'll just close slower. There are tricks of the trade. There are um, techniques that I, I can't really recommend people do unless they are a little more experienced because it could ruin the lens. <laughs> Um, and it also depends on which type of um, spring that it is. The 28 millimeter, I think the version one is the the big wire spring style, and then the version two, I don't remember. I'd have to open it up and see. There's a ton of bad advice out there though, so um, if you're looking at solutions online, like from DIY people or, or forums or groups, whatever, there's a lot of bad advice. Don't use a super heavy grease, don't use felt. Someone a long time ago was saying you use some uh, like flocking material, that's going to make an absolute disaster of your lens. Um, or some other stuff I've seen. I can't remember. Somebody else at one point was saying you, you do something with like a washer between the mount and the screw, but that's also a terrible idea because then you're changing your flange depth. Um, so yeah. That's a tricky one to answer without putting liability on myself. <laughs> Use Dremel to remove stripped screws. I can't tell if you're asking serious or not, Johnny. can we remove stripped screws because that rubber band thing doesn't work. Yeah, I see that rubber band trick mentioned all over the place and I've never, I tried that a handful of times when I was much, much younger and it's never worked. Dice ZM's not on sale. No, that won't. Oh, George. George, if you want ZM's, let me know. 
I make you special price. That's dangerous though. Those ZMs. That's still the lens that's sitting on my oops. And my Zeiss icon is a 50 one four ZM, I think. Yeah, it's gotta be one four. And then I have another one I've been tinkering with. Um a TT Artisan 50 mil 0.95 for my um, on in M mount for the icon, and it's a fun lens, but it's too big. That ZM is just fantastic because it's so small. Reverse focus on Milvis was a problem? Question mark. Um, depends on who you ask. I've never had a problem. Uh, maybe if you are are used to focusing by hand. And that's all you've done your entire career. Um, but if you're using a motor or a follow focus that you can reverse it on, I don't think it matters at all. And you'd never even notice. You don't need it, you want it. Yeah, I have that, and then I have the... I can't even remember now. I think it's a 35. Oh, I can't. Hold on. Actually, where I have put that? Uh, BRB. I don't know where it is, but I'm pretty sure I have the 35 as well. Oh, good, George. Poland is now 20% of... <laughs> sonar. Yeah, I think I do. What George said, I really appreciate the music. Oh, thank you, guys.
we'll find those other ZMs. I just, a lot of my, a lot of my personal lenses that were in my office got put in limbo. Um, cause I basically evacuated my office during COVID, uh, to make room for other, to, to space out all of our staff. So I don't know what happened to a lot of my personal stuff. <laughs> Oh, there's the flashlight I was looking for, and it's not dead, that's good. Does that show up on camera? Probably. Oh, it flickers like crazy. I don't think these flashlights are available anymore. I think this company died. Um, but this is, I've had this light forever and it's the best flashlight. It runs on a single 18650 cell, which is basically what's in my Tesla, which is awesome. Um, and it has an Arduino chip built into the, the body, um, with a whole bunch of cool stuff. There's an accelerometer, there's all sorts of things and I've programmed it for a bunch of different modes. Um, so if I do three taps and I shake it, it turns on and I have it set for like 10 seconds, maybe it was like five seconds, I don't remember. And it will just shut itself off, which is fantastic. When I'm working on something, I don't have to worry about the battery just dying. So then when I come back to my bench and I want to work on it again, I just pick it up and it turns back on. So I need to leave it and it always shuts itself off. Um, there it goes. And then for normal mode, it's one tap. It turns on to, um, with the accelerometer, it has basically straight down is 0% and straight up is 100%. So if I hold it down at 90 degrees, that's 50% power. And if I point it straight down, that's 1% power. And it's super dim. So very, very cool. I've programmed this thing probably a dozen different times for other cool functions, um, but I love it. The brand is called Hexbrite, but like I said, I think they went out of business. about unloading your ZM sonar. Oh no, I didn't mean mine. I love mine. I just meant I can get them for you. Brand new, not used.
like a 50 millimeter 0.95 cannot be converted to EF. Can it add? Can I add a Canon 59.5 to my Leica set match? Um, I mean, technically the 50.95 could be converted to EF, but it would require almost a complete rehousing. Um, there's not really any good way to get the 50.95 to work alongside like our lenses. This guy is pretty much done. I'm very happy with all of these mod parts. Everything installed nicely. Okay. Would have been the most trusted used sale vendor ever. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. There was... Uh, you could think of it that way. You could also think of it uh, such that I know every trick of how to hide imperfections and what to not show in a used lens listing, and which is why we don't sell used equipment. Um, yeah, that's ever we get asked that constantly. People always ask if we can if we sell like ours or Zeiss Contacts or anything. Um, I leave that to the people that specialize in that. I don't want to step on... The, the, those people are our customers and I don't want to step on their toes. Ah, I see what you mean. Yes, my lenses are very well cared for, to say the least. Update. Now we are on to the 517. This one is an oddball one. I have not modded this before, I don't think. Um, it's almost the entire outer shell is plastic. So the iris, this witness, focus scale are all plastic. The front housing is metal, the mount is metal, the whole chassis is metal, or aluminum. And I think the helicoid is brass. So this will be a, a learning experience here. remove this song from the playlist because it's kind of depressing. Let's take care of that now before I forget again. Do see more plastic underneath. Oh no, that's just polished metal. It's the lock ring. 
you'll almost never see a plastic lock ring. It's just a bad idea. In Brazil, we don't have anamorphic mirror. Do you already service this lens? Mirror. I don't think so. good. There's the ball, which means the spring is there. So a lot of this is a little concerning. That was, I said that weird. A lot is a little. All right, so there's the aperture linkage, which is metal, but it's only it's only held in. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna show. Uh, oh no, it's plastic too. I think, yeah, that is plastic, but it's two pieces and it gets sort of stamped in there. I don't know if this is gonna show up, but they basically melt the plastic around it which is not great for repairs because to replace that, you have to essentially break it completely and then put in a new one. That part is metal. This is metal and it's uh, essentially melted into this plastic iris ring. I'm wondering what's your thoughts on the Siri anamorphic lens? Um, I think they're, I think they're shaking up the industry. As far as anamorphics go, they're they're proving that you can you can get a decent look out of a very affordable uh, cylinder lens. Um, I I don't have enough experience with them to tell you how long they're going to hold up, but I suspect that they won't last as long as a proper cine lens. I don't know what factory is making them. Um, I do know that Siri themselves is not a glass manufacturer. Um, so they, I'm, I have no doubt that they have a partner or a company that they're contracting to do the work for them. It's the, to me, it's the same as like Nightcore a battery company all of a sudden comes out with lenses? No, that's not how that works. You can't just shift your your CNC machines over to making lenses. So I would like to know more about them. I would, I'd be curious to see how long they hold up. Uh, but I think they're, no matter what, they're still a, a good value. What tools do I need to completely disassemble a lens? Depends on the lens. There's no, there's no universal guide to what hardware to use in a lens. So every lens uses different hardware. But I'd say, uh, not to sound too salesy, but our precision driver set will let you take apart most of any lens aside from a couple specialty tools that you need from either you either need to make yourself or you need to get from the manufacturer.
Um, if you are interested in DIY mods and taking lenses apart, like I said, a really good starting point is our precision driver set. And then I think next week, actually, we've had our, me and all of our technicians have been field testing um, our new tweezers. Uh, and they're, uh, so far, I'm very happy. They're ESD, so they're safe to use in electronics. Um, super sharp, which I really appreciate. Uh, so we're going to start. If once we do our feedback round from all of our technicians, nobody has any complaints and everyone likes them, we'll start offering them on the website. So it'll be this, and I don't have one with me, but it's the the curved tip, and then there's another just straight pointed tip. So keep an eye on the the website. I'm actually, it, that, you know, selling you guys that stuff or mentioning it during the stream, I cringe a little bit, but at the same time, um, I watch a lot of YouTube content and I'm really glad that I can do this and not have to worry about sponsors and, uh, you know, taking a break to tell you about whoever's paying for the video. It's all just, it's all do close lenses, <laughs> obviously. as I sip from my Too Close Lenses mug in my Too Close Lenses hat and hoodie and my t-shirt. Oh no, my t-shirt today is, I don't think you can see it, but it's a uh, Mars Rover, Mars 2020, my shirt. I was fortunate enough to, uh, Never mind. I can't. I don't think I'm allowed to speak of certain things. So never mind. Forget I said that. Are the eyeglass? Glasses, frames, and lenses. No, sadly. <laughs> oh, these are Ralph Lauren. Um, my previous glasses, though, I threw my my optometrist through a loop because I specifically requested glass lenses. Um, which, if anybody here wears glasses, you know that that's very, very uncommon these days. They're always using a. Um, a polycarbonate or even like a high density polycarbonate um and i forced i demanded they use actual glass and they did uh, begrudgingly um and i didn't uh, i feel bad because i made them go through that trouble obviously it costs a lot more but i ended up polishing the coatings off of them like a couple weeks into owning them um, with the intention of having zeiss put on a, a t-star coating just for funsies, but I never got around to it. So those glasses sat uncoated for a year. Did you send him the rover? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, and I don't feel like pushing my luck. But um, I have made several trips to. JPL prior to the 2020 Rover's departure. I have a, I think all of everything I'm saying now is totally fine. I have a photo of myself with the Rover the day that it was packed up from JPL to ship out to the launch pad. I will leave it at that.
All right, so I don't know how this grease is going to react to plastic on aluminum. So this is a bit of a experiment here. Speaking of Mars Rover, uh, for any of you that are uber nerds like myself, Monday is the big day for the helicopter flight. So if you don't already follow JPL or NASA, do that, because that's going to be historic. I did that on one of the early mod streams when they were launching um, the SpaceX rocket. Uh, the first man, or the first, yeah, I guess you'd call it that, the first manned SpaceX rocket. Um, and we watched it live during the mod stream, which was kind of cool. Also historic. Ooh, that's, that feels nice. I'm impressed. Usually plastic does not feel as good as aluminum. Um, with this lubrication specifically. So that's encouraging. That means I don't have to experiment with other lubrications.
Okay, so that we do not need. Um, just double check that I have the right part number. That's good. This is not right. Okay. Progress. Anyone know if it's a Carl Zeiss planar? It is a Carl Zeiss Contax CY 50 millimeter F 1.7. Suppose modding Rolly Q 
QBM lens, this is pretty much the same job, but this with the contacts. I don't know that I've ever modded a Roly, but um, if that has the shutter built in, then no, it's not the same. Do you get a lot of lenses for repair or for accidents on the set? Yeah, I mean, not a lot, but it's not uncommon. Cool, I have the same lens, use it often on my Ursa. Nice, yeah, this would be a fantastic lens for an Ursa. And do you have the 2828 as well? Got in dirt shoot 10 years ago. Um, this client does have a 2828, and then we just finished it. I was in the States, I would definitely get them modded from you guys. We get lenses from all over the world. Don't hesitate. Don't let that stop you. <laughs> But I do know that shipping, especially in the uh, modern world, is challenging to say the least. Expensive to say the least. Had, uh, had some issues with a previous batch of anodizing 
and we switch to a different supplier. I'm really happy with the finish we get on these now. It matches contacts and Zeiss pretty well. And Leica. Leica's a little bit shinier. Actually, this is a bad example because this is plastic, but the, the metal bodied ones, uh, it matches really well. Could have been extra 400 used in taxes, shipping it. Oh, see, there's the trick. You can skip the import fees by sending it as a repair and return. So keep that fun fact in your pocket. Um, if you're ever sending lenses to us or anyone for that matter in the States, if you ship it as a repair and return, um, then customs knows, okay, it's coming back eventually. It's not, uh, it's not an item being sold. Um, and you can avoid those import taxes. What are your thoughts on the Contax 2128 28F2 and the 2828? I have an MMJ set and would like to keep them all MM. Don't think they made a 20 an MM 28F2. Um, that's a very debated topic. I know a lot of people love the Hollywood 28. Um, personally, I don't, I don't particularly enjoy it more than other lenses in that set. I do like the 21, uh, but if you're looking to save a couple bucks, then the 2828 is a perfectly good lens. That's this guy here. Uh, this is a fine lens. I have no complaints, uh, but if you need the speed, then yeah, you got to go with the Hollywood version, which is the 2.0. Uh, and if you want to get just a tad wider, then yeah, you got to go with the 21. Um, and when we're talking about focal length that wide, then yes, it does make a difference. I know it's only seven millimeters, but at the wide focal length, that's a huge difference. Oh man, I should have been checking these on my database the whole time. It's late because they're audited. F2. Yeah, that's what he said. 2128, 28 F2, and then 2828. That's what I'm saying. Is if you don't, if you want to save a couple bucks, go with the 28 and skip the Hollywood because it's still a perfectly good lens. All right. Let's find that database. At the very least, I can confirm my filter threads and whatnot. So I'll set this guy aside. 2828. Released 1978. Iris blades. What do we got? Six blades. Should be 0.25 meter minimum. Yes. Filter thread 55. Yes. Rubber focus grip. I can't weigh it because it's got the mod parts on it. Actually, I kind of can. Uh, it won't be exact, but let's try this.
So we have front ring, focus gear, mount, and cap. Oh, no front cap. is up. Uh, I need the diameters, but I'll do that later. All right, and then we did, what was this, the 517? 19 really? Six again. Fifty five front, yes. Plastic. Hundred and ninety grams. Let's do this again. Focus gear, mountain cap. I forget that. Oh, I didn't do the cap last time, so that's fine. Should be 190 ish. 190, spot on. Okay. Happy with those results. I got all my numbers, everything matches up. Okay. And then this guy, the 85 2.8, which also reminds me to change a banner. Like I said, the 35, 50, 90. Should I just get the 24 while I wait for the impossible 19? Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough call. Um, the 24 is not the best. Personally, I prefer the 28, but I see what you're, you're trying to get to the widest possible without going to the 19. Uh, in that case, yeah, you might be better off with the 24. If you choose one vintage set for your personal use, what would it be and why? Nikkor AIS, contact size like R. Ooh, I don't know that I could pick one. I would probably go with Leica R, but these days I'm leaning a little more towards the Secor Cs because I'm just enjoying them so much, uh, especially because of how versatile they are. We do a PL conversion and you can use them on practically any camera. Like a R is for a PL mount, you have to rehouse the whole thing, which then it becomes bigger and heavier. Uh, certainly has its benefits in the right scenario, but uh, the Mimias are so small and so light. I built a set of these a while back. They're really, yeah, the contacts you can't you can almost not go wrong with contacts prime. Which screwdriver's brand that you use? Um, currently it's my brand. This is our precision driver set. Um, I don't make these, obviously. There's a 
factory that makes them for us, but um, you can get the set on our website. It's very useful. Um, aside from this one that I use every day, we use Weeha brand a lot, which is like these guys. Weeha. They're fantastic. They're made in Germany. Um, they have a lifetime warranty, so when they break or wear out, you just send them back and they replace them. Very, very good quality. Is there a place you could recommend for an element replacement? A place that would have elements by diameter, thickness, and angle. That's not how that works, Marson. Um, you, I mean, you can find stuff like that. You can go to like Edmund Optics or uh, there's a handful of companies that will do that. But the diameter and the radius of the element are only part of the puzzle. Uh, there's thousands of different actual materials that go into that like you can you can perfectly replicate the diameter and the radius and everything uh and it'll still destroy your image quality because it's not the right refractive index it's not the right abbey number uh, there's so many variables that go into that just just getting the dimensions the same is not going to do it you'd have to be extremely lucky Okay, this one is also plastic, but the focus on this one is metal. The iris and the witness, though, I believe are plastic. This is in pretty good shape. This looks like plastic as well, but the front housing is metal. I can't tell if, I'm pretty sure this is metal. Yeah, this is metal, the focus scale. All right, oh, let's get these numbers. 85. Sonar. There we go. Also 1975. Or at least that's when they started. These lenses are probably much later because they're in pretty good condition. Uh, also six blades. Should be 230 grams. You say that Nikkor, AIS Nikkor, are generally softer, wide open than other vintage lenses. Mm, no. I. This is purely speculation, but um, photojournalists from that era, that vintage, you know, uh, 70s through the 80s, when the AIS were popular, Nikon was kind of the go to. So I feel like a lot of the AIS lenses got much more heavily used than similar lenses, such as Leica R or Canon FD that were not as popular with photojournalists. So I think the Nikons got kind of abused. Would you guys convert a Mia Secor C to PL mount for a customer? Yeah, we do it all the time. I will probably end up converting the lenses that I got, that I've been hunting, to PL mount. Alright, moving on here. Let's get cracking on this lens. Maybe 
the All Might AI since for abuse. <laughs> going to town on that air hose back there. That is probably David. I can't tell. <laughs> Pretty big white spot. I just realized that in my top down camera. It's really weird. I need a sunshade on that lens. Hi Matthew, I've been wondering if you use shims when you install EF mounts on still lenses to adjust collimation. Never found a good solution for my Rs. Yes and no. Depends on the particular lens. Sometimes we shim under the mount, and other times we do what we call slipping the scale, um, which is where we adjust where infinity lands on the focus scale so that it lines up perfectly. But when we install these mounts, yes, every single lens gets collimated. I never show that on the stream because it's on a machine that is too far away. I can't move my whole setup. Um, so that just happens after the mod stream. But yes, all of these lenses will go through collimation before they leave. Building up a Mamiya set right now. Only one I don't know of I should get is the 70 millimeter. I already have the 55 and 80. There's very little examples from this lens online. Have you tried it? Uh, No, I have the 80, which is my big pain right now because I'm going to attempt to remove the haze. I don't think I have a 70. No, I don't. So the 70 is an oddball. Um, it's not the, the Secor C version of the 70 is a leaf shutter, which is not going to work well for motion picture um, work. And then they have the, uh, the E model, which is, what is the E model? I don't remember. But there's no N version. I'm trying to stick to all the Ns with the exception of like the, the soft focus 45. Uh, I mean 145, sorry. I've never tried the 70. Nope. I don't, I mean, I don't think it's necessary if you already have the 80, that's such a small difference. I've heard that some AI lenses have a longer throw than AIS. Do you have any experience with that? Mm, if they do, then it's coincidence. I don't think that was part of their design goal. This has that same stamped plastic bit. I don't know if that's going to show up. They basically melt the plastic onto that um, that tab. Unfortunately. Do you know of an, a difference in number of blades? Mm. They're, I know the Nikors are not all the same. I don't know that that correlates to the AI versus AIS. I think that's just 
based on the specific lens design. That's pretty oily. I'm just going to mute this until it's done. I thought he was done. I think he's done. Maybe not. Wow. Why do you think that people that rehouse Nikors gravitate towards the AIS version? Hmm. A couple of reasons. Probably because it's a more comprehensive line of lenses. There's more focal lengths. I think there's also a, a big struggle within that community right now that I see a lot of. Where, let's say you have the AIS and the AI. And most people would agree that the AIS are better image quality than the AI. Uh, so they want to use those. We see the same thing all the time with, with like art. So people want, they want the, you know, the version two, or they want the, the latest serial number. So it's the most up-to-date optical design. But why? You're, you're hunting these lenses down because of their vintage look and their vintage character. Why are you trying to find the best of the worst, so to speak, you know? So I think it's a, a big misunderstanding that people have, or they want the best Nikkor, or they want the best Leica. But do you really? 
Um, yes, Mars, and technically it was, it was also how it interacted with the camera at the time. Uh, it's completely irrelevant now, aside from the, the optical differences. All right, let's see if this feels as good as the 50 did. Is there any similarity in the ZF2 series and the Nikors other than sharing the same mount? No. No, they have nothing in common optically. And focus inertia. Yes, that was a um, a Nikon prerequisite. If if Zeiss wanted to use Nikon's mount properly and license it properly, then their lenses had to focus in the correct direction to you know, correct to Nikon. Add. Yeah, I like that. Focus on this one, it feels really good. That 
that could be a little heavier, but I think once this is putting pressure on the iris ring, it'll feel perfect. Okay. messed up my audio plugin. Good morning, good afternoon. Where is here? Herks my air. What are your thoughts on the context 35 to 70 versus 28 to 85? Personally, I'm not a huge fan of either. Um, I know that a lot of people like the 35 to 70, which is totally fine. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of contacts and zooms in general. Um, and I also know that a lot of them have been abused over the years. There was a lot of conversions. There's a lot of modifications available for them. So you got to be really careful when you're shopping for those. Here is Germany. Ah, getting my wee house screwdrivers next week. Good luck. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. Oh, 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 oh. I don't remember if yours was a 28 version one or two. Oh no, you're talking about contacts. That's right. Yeah, that was a weird, a weird sound. Definitely not normal. I don't know what technician you brought it to, but um, that was... If I heard that, I would say, hey, this lens needs a clean. This is all good now. All right, I don't want to lose this caulking because that's spring loaded and I don't want to mess with that.
Oh no. Perfect. Do you see any mod many non AI Nikors? Um, yes. We've got a particular set here right now that's a challenge because the normal Nikon to Canon mounts don't work. Actually, I might grab that set and show you guys. Um, and it was even, I think Litax sells a specific kit that they say is good for those lenses, but it's not. <laughs> Still fiddling with these audio settings. Hey Matthew, enjoy the streams. Thank you. It makes long office hours a bit more enjoyable. Can you tell me how the Otis, Battis, and Milvis differ? Good question, Mr. Time Wave Productions. Um, oddly enough, I had sort of loosely kicked around the idea of doing a stream dedicated to just that, basically showing everything from contacts, lenses, or even prior, like Yena lenses, all the way up to Supreme Primes, uh, and everything in between, including Milvis, Otis, Battis, Loxia, Tuit, all of those. Um, so I'll, I'll go over it real quick here, but um, that your question encourages me. I will probably end up doing a an overall Zeiss breakdown. Um, so Otis, Battis, and Milvis. So two main categories there. The Otis and the Milvis are photo lenses. They're meant for, well, they're all photo lenses, but they're meant for a reflex style system, like a Nikon or Canon body. Um, the Battis are a mirrorless specific lens. They're completely electronic. There is no focus, there is no iris control. At least not a true manual control. In the Battis, the focus and the iris are controlled by internal motors. So even though you're turning a physical ring, that ring just has an encoder that tells the motor, okay, move it to this point or move it to that point. Uh, so if you take the lens off of a camera, it doesn't actually do anything when you turn the rings. Um, so the Battis are really, really good for super lightweight, super agile type work. The Otis and the Milvis are definitely going to be a, a higher image quality than the Battis, but they're also bigger and heavier. Um, all three of those are full frame, so no difference there. The, the Otis are the top of the line. That's You're not going to get better image quality than the Otis. Um, the Milvis are just a notch below, but even then, some of the Milvis lenses inherited their design from the their predecessor, the uh, Zeiss Classic, which, again, some of them inherited their design from these, the Zeiss Contacts. So some of those designs can be quite dated. Like the 50 macro and the 100 macro. Uh, but then there's some of the Milvis lenses that did inherit their optics from the classic line, like the 15 millimeter or the 135, but they were fantastic optical designs. Um, they don't need to be updated, so they're fine. They actually outperform 
in my opinion, some of the other Milvis. So that's your quick overview. But I am going to do a, I don't know what I'm going to call it, Zeiss Roundup, maybe. What's going on? Oh yeah, I got shoved. Those chromatic aberrations on the Milvis, the ZEs were terrible. See, that's misleading, George. The ZEs, some of them were really, really good. Like I said, the 15, the, the 135, um, those were fantastic designs. And to be clear, ZE is not a, um, it's not a product line. ZE is strictly a mount standard. So that's the Zeiss's version of the EF mount. So the classic, the Milvis and the Otis all have a ZE version. So what I think you're referring to is the classic ZEs, which yes, a lot of them were dogs. The 5014, the 8514, they were terrible. No question about it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Zeiss, they like to throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Um, so I have been meaning to do a video like that for a while. Going to once I can gather up all the different lenses, it's it's a lot of lenses from from the cheapy, you know, Battis and Loxia all the way up to Supreme Primes. It's probably probably six or seven different product lines. Let's try this again. I see exactly what I did wrong here. I feel like my Zeiss, my contact Zeiss lenses have terrible CA. They do, but that's kind of the point. <laughs> More purple on those than a grape jelly factory. Wow. Try this the other way. Align this first, and then this guy.
There we go. Now, stay. Are the Zeiss Classic ZF2 a super sharp lens, or do they have some character? I'm having a hard time finding the test. Um, the Classic ZF2 definitely have a lot of character in certain focal lengths. Um, that's kind of what I was saying a minute ago about how it's it's impossible to define that entire line with good or bad because they're very there's so much variation in each focal length so for example the 15 and the 135 are really good lenses the 25 f2 is a really good lens the the 50 macro is arguably okay uh, but then you have dogs in the set like the 35 the 51 sorry the 514 and the 8514 so as a set there's no good or bad it's really down to individual lenses um The Leica R series is overhyped. Who would you say is underrated? I get that question almost every weekend, and I, I I was giving an answer, but now I almost don't want to say because I feel like it's encouraging people to go out and buy them, which is going to drive the price up, which I don't want because then I have to pay more. <laughs> so, um, uh, I don't know. Take a look back at some of the old mod streams and you'll see what I think is underrated. They have less CA when shooting film though, since they're designed for emulation stack of film. Uh, yeah, not, not really. The ZF2 and the ZE, I mean, by that logic, film can be more forgiving. Um, but Zeiss, Zeiss consistently strived to have the image land on the same plane, regardless of the wavelength. So the CA is going to perform the way it does. I mean, that, that argument could be made for practically any lens. I don't know that it's specific to the ZF2s and ZEs. That's too thick. That's not going to fit. feels pretty good. I'm, I'm not unhappy with it, but considering it's plastic on metal, it's pretty nice. It's consistent. I'm liking the value in Nikkor really considering a lot, uh, really considering a set, hence all the questions. I, you can't go wrong with the Nikors. That's they've been a solid lens for decades.
That's really good. Clean, simple, nothing too flashy. What character do you look for in a vintage lens? Depends on the project. Not a bad little set. Cleanup time. Did anybody look into uh, any more lens hunting? Um, actually, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't end up. I was mentioning it earlier in the stream. I didn't end up getting the um, the one fifty. I have to find that seller so I don't buy the same one again. <laughs> the one that canceled. Oh, it looks like it... It wasn't... Canceled? I don't understand. I gotta look into this more. But, okay, I have the seller name here now, so... Let me clean up this stuff first. And we'll do some hunting. It's getting warm in here today. get browser here don't show them the lens you want another war <laughs> I still have no idea if somebody watching the stream grabbed that lens or
When I entered, you were talking about adjusting the focus of lenses when done. I asked mod places in Europe and they told me they don't do that. From your point of view, I feel it's always necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, here's the problem with collimation. It's absolutely necessary. I can't imagine using a lens in an actual production environment that hasn't been collimated. It's, it's like taking a lens out, not knowing if it's going to work or not. However, no matter how precise we adjust back focus and collimation on a lens, putting it on a cheap, flimsy adapter that throws away that collimation anyway makes it kind of a moot point. So if you're using a good camera with a good adapter, then yes, it, you absolutely should be having your lenses collimated. If somebody's modding lenses and they're not doing, they're not performing collimation, then they're, they're not a technician. They're just, uh, they're just putting some pieces on a lens. And I might regret saying this, but no. By, by setting this standard, by holding the, the term Cinemod to a higher standard, it's, I, I'm probably going to force people, you know, these, these hobbyist guys to actually invest in something like a collimator or a projection bench, um, or projector, I mean, uh, but without those tools, uh, it's just, it's just putting pieces on a, it's like hot rodding a car without tuning it. You know, anybody can put some pieces on it, but to do it properly, it has to be tuned. Um, so yes, collimation is necessary. If people are, you mentioned mod places in Europe. If they're a mod place and they're not performing collimation, then they're not, they're not a mod place. They're just hobbyists, which is fine. I have no problem with that. Uh, it's not necessary if you're doing it for your own lenses and you're accepting those risks. But if someone's charging you to do that, they should be doing collimation. Okay, let's do some shopping here. eBay, yay. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff I looked at. So what I specifically want, maybe a 150 millimeter, um, It's the, well, maybe I shouldn't show people. <laughs> Go away. All right, that's it right there. Near Mint plus plus plus. There's another one, new listing, but these are the exact same listing. That photo is almost identical. It's not the same photo. You see the the lens is rotated just a little bit. You can't see the serial number, but that's scarily similar. Um, so let's see this guy. It's a hundred bucks less. See if they show the serial number. Oh, that's not on the front on these. On the Mimias, it's somewhere on the side of the lens, usually stamped. So, uh. Yeah, they don't they don't show the serial number. So I suspect these are the same lens. Oh, right there. 004404, okay. The serial number sticker has come off. That's a lie. There is no sticker on the Mimias. So, huge red flag. It sounded like calibration. Oh, collimation. Is that what you're asking? I mean, collimation is part of the calibration process. 
Um, okay. Appearance is beautiful. Tiny scuffs from normal use. Optics. Beautiful condition. No fog, no fungus, no scratch. So, in theory, this is a great lens. However, this is a huge red flag to me. Um, where is this located? It's in Japan. Yokohama camera. So it's probably an actual camera store. This one is Japan camera 2020. Um, also Japan, Nagano. Okay. Yeah, Thin Haze. Well, okay, so that's really concerning that they said that the serial number was... The sticker was scratched off. <laughs> Careful, Johnny. Aloha from Norway. All right. Is it possible for Duclos to make a custom-made lens cover for the Laua Um? Oh, because that metal cap is garbage? Yes, we can definitely do that. Um, all right, let's see if we can find any telltale marks to see if this is in fact the same lens. Yeah, see, this is not a sticker. This is stamped into the lens body. All right, so this is the more, uh, that's the, the cheaper one that has a thin haze. So this one's more expensive. Oh. What is happening there? I can't zoom in. <laughs> Maybe it was a sticker. I've never seen these with a sticker. Very interesting. Well, I don't see any defining marks to compare the two to see if they are in fact the same lens. Actually here, this right here, you see this, this tiny bit of wear on the, so that might just be from a wipe, Never mind. That might be a piece of lint. All right, let's look at these wear patterns here on the mount. You got some some breakthrough on the anodizing. Uh, let's see, counterclockwise from the red dot, mostly. Oh wait, that's the... Yeah, see this one looks to be in better condition. So they're not the same lens even though the photo looks almost identical. Um, okay, so 550 for this one, and this is the scratched off serial number. Okay. 
I think I'm gonna have to go for... Just check mine's a sticker. Wow. <laughs> of all of the Mamiya's I have, I've never seen the serial number as a sticker. Okay, let's... Despite, oh no. This is the cheaper one. All right, I'm going to go with a slightly more expensive one. Because I don't want that thin haze. All right, this one it is. Oh, wait, this is not the right account signed in on this browser. Okay. All right, that's all I'm buying today, so. <laughs> That's all the hunting I'm doing today. I don't want to. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because I will buy too many lenses. So, thank you all for Saturday hanging out. Um, like, subscribe, all those things, and uh, see you next Saturday.